Welcome back to AM Buffalo. The Monroe Fordham Regional History Center, established at SUNY Buffalo State by former President Muriel Howard, continues and expands the archival collection work begun more than 30 years ago by Dr. Monroe Fordham. And it serves as a resource for mm -hmm. the campus and surrounding community, bringing together materials, including newspapers, photographs, personal papers, as well as organizational records. Yes, and today, Dr. Tory, an assistant professor of philosophy and contributing for professor in the Africana Studies Unit at, Bu at SUNY Buffalo State is going to share some really great information gathered from this very resource. Now, Dr. Tory holds a bachelor's in philosophy and Spanish from Morehouse College and a master's in PhD in philosophy from the University of Memphis. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. We Thank appreciate you. For me. you. Uh -huh. We also wanted to make sure that we give a special thanks to Buffalo State University mm -hmm. Archives and Special Collections because we are going to have a partnership over this month. Um, making sure that we're giving folks some really great information yeah. from the archives. And you, of course, are going to be the vehicle with which we get it. <laughs> so we're it. so grateful for you. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate being here, ladies. Thank you very much for having me. Um, the archives have been a fantastic resource for Buff State, and I want to make sure to celebrate not just the archives today, but also the man who helped found them, Dr. Monroe Fordham, uh, and his regional history center. Uh, Dr. Fordham was born in October 11th, 1939, in Georgia. So. Uh, far away from Buffalo, <laughs> uh, but he got his PhD uh, from the University at Buffalo in 1973. Okay. While working at uh, UB on his doctoral work, he started working at Buff State, where he ended up becoming a uh, professor uh, after he finished his degree, and from there he ended up being a department chair for a decade and did a wonderful job um, shepherding and developing the history department and doing a whole lot more work to develop uh, uh, work inside of Western New York and the Niagara area about black people in the black community. Yeah, in 30 years, he collected for over 30 years. You, you uh, gave us some photos that we're going to pull up. I would love if you can go through some of these yes, for us, yes. Dr. Tory. So let's see what we have here. What are we okay. looking at? Uh, that's a photo from the Color Musicians Club, so another one of our famous staples here in Buffalo. Uh, that's another one of the pieces of the archives. Dr. Fordham has a number of photos, uh, videos, uh, not pardon, not video, but photos, mm -hmm. and other pieces of work from the Color Musicians Club, which is fantastic. Um, so that's one of, many, uh, one of many Buffalo institutions that we have access to inside the archives. Wow. And could you talk to us about how extensive the archives are? Yeah. I think people need to know that because they are also publicly accessible, you could go there at any time mm -hmm. and educate yourself yes. on all the amazing resources that we have. So talk to us about that. How extensive are we talking? Oh, we've got hundreds of hundreds of pieces of things to look at, whether we're talking again newspapers, photographs, uh, monographs, um, down to, I've seen obituaries inside the, wow. the I mean, a, a, a pieces of information of all kinds that celebrate and uh, also inform us about the history of Black Buffalo, uh, particularly inside the East Side. So one of the things they've got uh, are a large list of churches that they've got a repository of information about a number of individual organizations uh, like the African American Historical Association of Western New York and Niagara mm -hmm. and the East Side uh, History Project. Yeah. So there are a number of wonderful things here. What are we um, looking at here? Here, this, I love these photos. Uh, this is one of our churches. I believe that's Bethlehem E. Um, and so he's, uh, again, another uh, one of many churches that we've got yeah. access to where we'll get inside photographs, outside photographs. this is the Michigan photograph. Street Church. Pardon, this is the Michigan Street Church. Yes. Thank you, thank you, yes. Uh, this is a church that we'll hear a little bit more about uh, when we get to Mary Talbert in a week or so. So just to wet your whistle. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I love this. Um, uh, I love this. One of many great places that we have information about from the archives. Yeah. You know what's very interesting is that you are not, the archives aren't a static thing. They are constantly growing. Mm -hmm. yes. Tell us about that. How is it growing? How would you like people to contribute? Well, I'm glad you asked this because Dan and Charles and I were talking about this yesterday. Uh, what we want people to know about the archives is that we are a trustworthy place that you can provide your resources, provide your information. Mm -hmm. And unlike other um, archival institutions where they kind of hoard the items and don't return them, right. one of the things that Dr. Fordham really was a pioneer about was giving the archives, about giving the information back to the community mm -hmm. members. So he would go out. Uh, one of the reasons why the archives even began mm -hmm. is because there were no um, primary sources on black people when he was doing his doctoral work. So he went into the black community and 
he had what they called a microphone machine, so he could record some information. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. And yes. he would ask them for uh, whatever he could get. He would record it and then give it back to them. And so we still practice that inside the archives now. Love now, Dr. That. Tory, what if someone wants to, someone like myself from the community wants to, what is that process like to go view some of this information? Oh, uh, you got to go see Dan and Charles. They'll let you see it right away. <laughs> <laughs> um, you have to go. Uh, we are, we house it here at Buffalo State University's library, um, and go make an appointment or just show up and ask to see them. Honestly, it's a it's an incredible sight just to see all the work that's there. I was pouring through some of it last night. Um, it, it, it's cool to see that I'm inside the same intellectual tradition that he's in because some of the same stuff he was telling his students. It's some of the same stuff I'm telling my students. So honestly, you just have to walk up and ask or make an appointment and you can go see this stuff. You are a wealth of information. I'm so yes. glad that you're able to share the archive with us. Yes. And just as a reminder, every Wednesday in Black History Month, yep. we're gonna have Dr. Tori back on our show to share with us more very, very yes. integral information for our local communities, stuff we need to know. Yeah. And thankfully, again, like I said, throughout the month, not yeah. just on Wednesdays, very we're exciting. going to have a lot of facts. And it's going to be good facts that yeah. you can share in your conversations with your family and your mm -hmm. friends yes. and start conversations.